Inside this Ryerson University lab, Mark Zaidi has a pretty ambitious goal. Lower the price of one of the most expensive materials on Earth. So this is aerogel. Wow, feels completely different than I was expecting. And today, all right, here goes. Mark's giving me a very hands-on look at what this material can do. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Aerogel, or solid smoke as some call it, was first developed around 1930. But it shot to fame in 2004 when it was used on NASA's Stardust mission. A special collector grid containing over 100 ice cube sized chunks of aerogel was used to capture tiny particles of dust as they spewed from a comet at six times the speed of a bullet. A heavier material would have caused the comet particles to vaporize on impact, but the ultralight aerogel allowed scientists to successfully collect them for clues on the formation of our solar system. Aerogel is actually the lightest or lowest density solid material on the planet. And it's also the best insulator ever made. And all of that is thanks to its very airy composition. It's a matrix of silica, almost like a branching framework just of sand molecules everywhere. But 97% by volume, it's actually all air. Basically, you take two chemical compounds, you mix them together, in the span of about 20 minutes, you'll have something called an alcogel, which is alcohol present in the gel. And through a specialized drying process, you can replace that alcohol with just normal air and get an aerogel. Historically, aerogel production could only be done using a process called supercritical drying, which requires intense pressure and lots of money. But recently, Mark came up with a much cheaper solution. By modifying the drying steps, you can actually just use normal food dehydrator and just make it yourself. Commercially available air gels can cost up to $134 per gram, which is about three times the price of gold. However, I've been able to produce air gel at only $2 per gram. If I can bring down the cost of air gel, I can allow other researchers to investigate all sorts of potential applications so I've seen lots of pictures of this stuff, but actually getting to hold a piece in my hand, it feels more like hard foam than a gel. Yes, yeah, so its name's actually a bit misleading. And what's all the rest of this stuff here? So we actually have a bunch of different aerogel-based products. Over here we have aerogel chunks, about one cubic centimeter. And over here we also have little grains of aerogel, yeah. which is a bit finer. Kind of like sand grains. Mm -hmm. And then the finest form we have is an aerogel-based powder. Now, if you take that and shake it up a little, yeah. um, you can actually see that its volume almost appears to double wow. at first. That's really cool. So the reason being is that aerogel has such a low density and very little intermolecular forces that the individual grains don't really want to stick to one another. Now, over here, we have aerogel that has been infused into cotton. So this could be used for scarves or jackets or even pants, and they'd keep you warmer than just normal cotton alone. One other interesting application of this is the ability for these aerogel particles to make anything it touches nearly completely waterproof, including your own hands. Wow, so what do I do? So you can just take those, rub it into your hands as if you're washing them, just really get it in there. The aerogel should just like cause the water to bounce <laughs> off your hands. That is so weird. It's like I'm holding mercury here. So the waterproofing is actually an added benefit, but some people have expressed interest in using it in cosmetics, for example, like waterproof mascara, waterproof makeup. One of the most promising applications for aerogel is as an insulator. To demonstrate, Mark first uses a regular piece of pink fiberglass insulation to protect an ice cube from a heat gun cranked to full blast. It takes about eight minutes for this ice cube to fully melt. Next, Mark performs the same experiment again, but this time, the insulation has been coated with aerogel crystals. 10 minutes and counting right now. I'd say we got a winner. With aerogel in the insulation, the ice cube lasts more than twice as long. The perfect setup for our grand finale. Okay, so now we are going to put the insulative powers of aerogel to the ultimate test. 
With this butane lighter and this tiny little puck of aerogel on my hand, just to prove how hot this is gonna get, what are we doing here, Mark? So what I'm gonna have you do is take this butane torch, put it straight onto this fiberglass mat, right? and I'm gonna take the temperature of it using this infrared thermometer. Let's try it. Keep going closer. Okay, it's starting to burn. What's the temperature now? It is 209 degrees Celsius. 209 degrees Celsius. Yeah. You sure this is gonna work? Uh, it better. Why do I do these things? Here goes nothing. NASA is already experimenting with aerogel as a heat shield to protect spacecraft. I'm starting to get nervous now. So I'm hoping it'll keep my hands safe too. Keep getting closer? Yeah, go for it. Oh my God. Yeah, I can't feel it. I honestly can't feel it at all. <laughs> I could just start to feel it at the end, but just kind of, I think just kind of coming over the sides, but that's pretty impressive. 200 plus degrees Celsius and still got my hands, as you can see. Wow. 